I'm sure you've heard the phrase, I wish I knew then what I know now. It's a cliche, but it's profoundly true because life experience is our best teacher in a wide range of subjects. I've learned a few lessons about motorcycles and motorcycling from more than four decades of riding and wrenching. And if my younger self had known some of these lessons, I wouldn't have had to learn them all the hard way. In this video, I'll share a few of those nuggets and who knows, maybe they'll save you a hard knock or two. Most older motorcyclists can look back at the bikes they've owned and point to at least one that they wish they still had. It might have been their first bike, maybe a hand-me-down from a relative, or maybe a model that's collectible now. Whatever the reason, when they remember that bike through rose-colored glasses years later, they'll regret parting with it. My son's first bike is this 2016 Honda CB500F. He's kept it in immaculate condition since he bought it three years ago. As a first street bike, it's perfect. Small enough to be sensible, but big enough to be respected and comfortable at highway speeds. It has that solid Honda feel, it's surprisingly quick, and it routinely draws compliments for its looks. But like anyone in their early street biking life, our son often talks about trading up from the 500 to something bigger. This 500 still has a strong resale value, so it would go a long way toward paying for a bigger one. But at some point, perhaps decades from now, I just know he'll wish he still had this one. Not just this model, but this very bike. For most of us when we're young, money is tight and hanging on to a motorcycle for sentimental reasons is a luxury we just can't afford and we often don't recognize the sentimental value of something until after we've let it go. But if you know you have that bike now, try to find a way to keep it. Or at least ask the next owner to give you first dibs to buy it back. Your future self will thank you. My younger self had a chance to buy the 1977 Honda CB404 that a family friend loaned to him for his first summer of street biking. He didn't buy it and I'd kick his ass for that if I could. Thankfully, I found this 1976 404 in 2022, so things worked out okay in the long run. You get what you pay for, and that's especially true for motorcycles. There have been times in my younger life when I just wanted a two-wheeler to ride and money was very tight, so I ended up with a beat up old bike. But if you buy an old worn out bike, you aren't going to do much riding. Don't expect that if you fix one or two problems, it'll be good as new. If it's worn out, it'll keep breaking. The only way to avoid that is to fully restore it, which isn't cheap or fast. It's one thing if you want to fix or upraise a project, but it's another thing if you just want to ride. In which case, if you buy a cheap junker, it isn't going to work out well for you. So, my younger self, you'll come to regret buying that $400 MX-125 and that $600 650 Sika. They'll give you about one day of riding for every month they're parked while you wait for the money or parts to fix the latest breakdown. Do yourself a favor and walk past the impulse buys until you have enough money in your pocket to get a bike you can spend more time riding than fixing. There's no sense in doing anything fun if you don't live to brag to your buddies about it. This isn't a safety video, but in the context of what we're talking about here today, it's a sad reality that many younger riders take more risks than they should. They might know the statistics, but they believe they'll never be a statistic, because none of those bad things can happen to them. An experienced biker knows those things can happen to anyone. So I'll just leave my younger self with a few truths that I've come to learn about motorcycle safety. No matter how short the ride, wear a helmet. Thankfully, my younger self did this. Unless you have every passenger sign a waiver before getting onto the back of your bike, you have no right to put them in danger. When someone else is trusting you with their life and limb, you need to be the safest rider you can be. Thankfully, my younger self also understood this. 
but he knew others who didn't. Your biker friends will often be pushing the envelope, and it's human nature to be competitive. So some people will give in to the peer pressure and try to ride beyond their skill level. Ride your own ride and let everyone else do the same. If they want to risk their lives, it's their decision, but they don't get to decide where your limit is. It takes time and practice to develop any skill. You might think you were born with the abilities to ride like Valentina Rossi, but you weren't. Nobody was, including Rossi. And there's no shame in admitting it. A powerful bike can take anyone by surprise and suddenly become more than they can handle. But not everyone knows that a small bike can do it too. By my count, our Honda Z50 has tossed three adults onto the ground since we bought it, so any bike can surely go fast enough to hurt you. In one way, the world is divided into motorcyclists and everybody else. Owning a bike moves you from one group to another, so it changes how you identify yourself. And you might feel like you need to have a bike to retain that part of your identity. But there are times, call them phases of life, when we need to put our passion for bikes on the back burner. For example, if you have a young family to raise, you have an obligation to stay alive to look after those who depend on you. That means you need to ratchet down your appetite for risk. For that reason, my younger self didn't own a motorcycle for several years. But I'm not saying you need to give up yours. You just need to be more sensible than you were as an invincible youth. I made a video about some of the myths surrounding Honda Goldwings. One of those myths is that the Goldwing is an old guy's bike. That couldn't be further from the truth. These bikes are actually loads of fun. They're powerful and surprisingly easy to handle while being as comfortable as any motorcycle you'll ever put under your behind. It's been said many times and I'll repeat it here. You have to ride a Goldwing to appreciate just how good they are. And a biker of any age will appreciate those qualities. Even if my younger self could hear all this advice, I doubt he'd have the sense to take most of it to heart. After all, sometimes we need to make mistakes to learn the things a modicum of common sense should have told us. As they say, good judgment comes from wisdom, and wisdom comes from bad judgment. In any case, motorcycling is recreation for most of us, and as such, it's meant to enrich our lives. So the most important thing my younger self needs to know about motorcycling is have fun, but be sensible. And things will work out all right. Thanks for watching.